I need an intro. Just start the damn video! What's going on guys? Reploid Productions. And as I said, I'm going to start coming in here. I'm going to do all kinds of videos, all kinds of blogs and things, talk about what's going on. And, and uh, it just so happens I do have a subject. I went to the comic book store that I said I wasn't going to anymore. And once again, all over again, I remembered why I stopped going there. I just, I don't get it. I don't. It's, it seems, I'll explain, okay? As you guys know, I do Keeping Up with the X-Men. And because of that, there are certain books that I need. And one of the books that I needed this time was uh, the Gambit Rogue book that came out. Now, because the comic book store I trust is a smaller comic shop... He got screwed. There were only so many that were sent to our area, and they were only sent to one store. And he was skipped over. Now, normally, I avoid saying the name of this store that irritates me. But you know what? I'm tired of that. I'm tired of playing this safe game. I'm just, I'm done with it. You know what? It's Acme. It's Acme Comics. There. I did it. I said it. That's who they are. If you're in the local area and you know this place, and you probably, they have a huge following. They're the guys. They're the big store. They're the ones that matter. They're the big top thing. Zeke's is better. 100% guaranteed. I will battle you. I don't care. I will argue night and day, every single day. He's better. He's better in every single way. He's better at customer service. I like his shop more. His stuff is cleaner. He takes in quality. He doesn't give me garbage. He looks out for my interests. He is better at his store than Acme is at their store. Acme is established. That's it. That's all they've got. I don't care if you're one of the people that frequents his shops. I'm telling you, Acme is ridiculous. Let me explain something. The reason I stopped going to Acme Comics, I'd been there for a while, and they were the only choice. That's reason one why they're around the way they are. Because you can go in this area, we also have another shop called The Zone, and you could have went there. And then there's one other shop, to be fair, but it's, it's a lot like The Zone, and I'm not going to say anything about them because I don't have the experience to give a legitimate opinion on that shop, so we're going to leave them alone. Now look... The other comic shop only deals in older comics and is basically a gaming shop. It deals with magic and cards and things like that, and that's fine. That's what they are. That's how they survived. That's the community that surrounds that place, and it's fine. I've never had an issue with that guy. I walk in, he talks to me, he's a cool guy, and he's, he's real friendly, and... He usually, he's usually not standoffish. He doesn't bother me. If I have a question, he'll talk to me. He'll answer my question. And if I just have a random, bogus, ridiculous topic that I want to discuss, he'll humor me. Um, sometimes he doesn't care what I have to say, to be fair. And uh, every now and then he'll just, he'll just kind of tell me that. He'll be like, yeah, I really don't. I don't know nothing about that. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not a stupid customer, okay? I'm not going to come in and drop my crap on you either. Because I know that that gets old as well. But, this guy, he does just fine. I don't hate his shop, but he deals in mostly old books, and they're priced like a collector's market, so you have to kind of be specific about what you're going in to see. He doesn't give me the new stuff that comes out, so he's not really my comic store. That leaves me with only two other options. One, Acme, or two, Zeke's. Zeke's Comics and Games. Now, why do I choose Zeke's Comics and Games? For the exact same reason I went there today. Years ago, I went to Acme, and this is what killed it. This is what killed it. About a year ago, to be fair. Not years. I went to Acme, and I said, hey, I I'm, know that I've been coming here for like, I don't know, six years, and I've never set up a pull list, but I'd like to set up a pull list. Now, I want you to keep in mind that I've been going there for six years, years. Six years I went to this shop. I always went to this shop. I bought out of their 50 cent bins. I bought out of their dollar bins. I bought a couple things off the rack. I bought their toys. I liked the, the, their merchandise side and whatnot. It was, it was fine. It was a fine experience. But I, I always had this one major problem, and that was when I tried to talk to them. 
And it's, it's multiple people. It seems to be almost every single person that works in there. There was like one guy that sometimes talked to me, and even he was kind of standoffish. All they do in that shop is they're watching TV. They got a TV, and it's hanging up there, and they watch, they watch uh, movies all day. Like, the time that I went in there that I quit, I went in and I said, oh, you guys, uh, you guys skipped me. Well, let, let's start with the pull list. My first really negative experience, of course, there were others along the way, and there were good ones, so I stayed there. My first major negative experience was I said, I need to set up a pull list. And this guy, who'd, been, who'd known me, who'd seen me for six years and still never figured out my name, said, well, okay. Then he turns around, goes into the cabinet, picks up this piece of paper, lays it down. Pushes it towards me. Goes back to watching TV. And I said, what? What do I do? And he says, circle what you want. Circle what you want. We'll take care of it. And he's, a, he's that bland. I wish I was making that up. He's that shitty. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. So I go ahead and I do exactly what he says. I circle some things. And then I'm like, well, you don't even have... The whole reason I'm coming in here like this is because I want to start rebirth. I want to start getting into rebirth. And he says, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's going to be big. I said, are you looking forward to anything in general? And he says, uh, DC's pretty much buried itself. We'll see what happens. All right. Okay. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Everybody has their own opinions on comics and things like that. I'm going to leave that alone. I said, well, that, that's fine. So you don't have any of rebirth on your list. And he says, yeah, I know, just write it in. I said, write in every single thing I want of Rebirth? And he says, yeah, yeah, we'll take care of it. And I said, you also don't have any Star Trek or Star Wars or anything like that on your list? And he says, yeah, just write it in. Write it in, we'll figure it out. And so now I'm like, okay, well, all right, that's it's your store, but... Whatever, so I turn the paper over and I'm like, da, 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 da. and I, I've talked about this before. I have a 45 book poll list at any given time. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. Most of the time it's around 45 books, okay? And of those books, on his thing, he had like Spider Man and one or two things like that. So I'm writing in like 40 freaking titles, which first off looks really bad. Because I could be one of those guys that comes in and buys my books for a week and leaves. But I'm not. And to be fair, they should have known that. I've been there for six years. So, but he doesn't even know my name. And he doesn't even care. The only thing I ever get when I walked in the store ever for six years was, Hey man, what's up man? Done. Done. Doesn't matter what I tried to talk to him. He was always like one answer, one, one word, move on, please, go away. I'm watching this TV. And that's not just him. There's another guy in there who's uh, who's very standoffish. Who was a skinnier dude who constantly just kind of crapped on me, like like legitimately kind of crapped on me every single time. I'd be like, I'm kind of kind of thinking about getting into this or whatever. And he was very much like kind of a guy that was just pushing the indie title. Like he didn't. He would be like, he'd be like, mm, it's a waste of money, but whatever, it's your money all the time, all the time. And whatever, we're not, we're not even going to get into that guy. Um, so I set up this poll list, and I leave. And I think, okay, well, that's underway now. I'll start stopping in on Wednesdays, and I'll pick up my books. I knew that I had to give him some time. So I give him about a month or so, and I keep coming in, and I keep being like, you, you don't have this or this or this or this on my, on my list. And he says, Oh, they're, they're over there on the rack. You can just go get them. Pretty sure, there's, pretty sure they're over there. Now, I realize that that happens from time to time. So I go over there and I get my books and I try not to complain. But here's what tipped me. They release all the Rebirth number ones. Rebirth. Single shots. The one shots. They said Rebirth one, which was a bad idea for them to do in the first place, but they did it. They didn't say one shot. You get what I'm saying? I get all of them. Then the next month I come in, sorry, my nose is itching me like crazy. I come in and he's like, yeah, there was nothing. There was nothing. Then nothing, nothing came out. And I was like, I'm positive something came out. I don't know why you would think that. And he says, no, no, nothing, nothing came out. 
So I go over to the racks. And I'm like, well, I can't necessarily argue with the guy. I buy a couple of things and I leave. I come back and he gives me issue twos. I'm like, all right, well, now I think we're on track. Go home and I open the books, start reading them, and I'm like, I'm missing something. There's something missing. This is not starting at the start. In fact, this book even says part two of a storyline. So I go back. And I go over to the racks and I pick up the issue ones. And I open it up and I look and I start comparing. And then I see one of the ones that's sitting there and I pick that up and I opened it up. And they're different. They're not the same book. There's one rebirth and then issue one of the actual run of these comics, which should have been like when they launched the books, it should have been an issue zero. It should have said one shot. That's a screw up on their part as well. But here's what killed me. I walked up and I said, you never gave me the issue ones. And he said, yeah, we did. I remember we did. And I said, no, you didn't. You gave me the one shots. And he says, no, those, those are all issue ones. And I said, no, they're not. And I, I went over and I grabbed the two books. And I said, these are two different books. And he says, uh, no, you didn't say anything about wanting variant covers. I said, this is not a reprint. It's not a variant. I said, this is one book and this is another book. And he says, no, they reprinted all of the, uh, all the number ones variant covers and sent them to us. And I said, are you reading any of it? And he says, no. I said, is anybody in your store reading Rebirth? And here's what killed me. Because when I asked this question, there was one guy hanging out who I knew worked there. There was the guy behind the counter who was the big guy that just watches TV. Then the guy that owns the store is right back there. He comes out and he's kind of looking while I'm talking, like he thinks I'm causing a problem. And he's like, oh, well, no, no, there's a couple people that are interested. Nobody's reading it. And I said, in a comic book store where you sell comic books, there is not a single one of you reading a single DC title. No Batman, no Superman, no Superwoman, no Flash, no nothing, no one, no, no, nothing. Not one person is reading even one Rebirth book. And he was like, oh, there's a lot of books. There's a lot of books out there. Now, he's right to say that there's a lot of books out there. But you run a comic shop, okay? And not one employee reads DC. But you carry DC because you sell it. And not one customer before me came to you and said, this is this. There are guys that were buying every single Batman title. They got screwed just like I did. And you could say that this is not a big deal. But what became a big deal to me was I realized at that moment that all the times that I ever walked into the store, and talked about Superman or Batman or Spider-Man or something of the sort, none of these guys were reading those titles. They were humoring me. Their job is to sell books, and that is the only thing they were doing, selling books. doesn't matter what putts, what number walks into the room and says, hey, I like books, they'll sell you that book. You mean nothing. You mean nothing. Nothing. You are a joke. The only real people that are there are people that have been there for so long and are basically friends with those guys. They don't, they have z horrible, horrible customer relations, not service relations, because the service isn't even a real thing either. They just kind of sit up there at the desk and you bring them up something and then they ring you up. Beep, 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 beep. Get out of here. Now, that was the day that I made a very conscious decision. I had done a review for Zeke's Comics and Games, which was nothing more than that. I went and I checked them out and I did a review on his site and I knew that he'd moved. And I was like, you know, I did like him. I drive down to his shop. I go into the door. Immediately, he's like, oh, what's up, man? Because he remembered me. I, I went in there back when he first started. I had two and I had like a two-hour conversation with the guy. I picked up a couple things from him, and I had left 
and done a video on his shop. He remembered that. So we got to talking. and got kind of hanging out and talking and everything. And I told him what I'd just been through. And I said, I'm looking to get a pull list. I'm going to try, try you out for a while. I don't want to drop comic book stores altogether. I don't really feel like I want to go internet. That's not really me. So let's figure out what we can do here. So he's like, okay. I set up with him. And I watched as this shop has grown and developed. And the way he talks to people. And the way he legitimately cares about what he's doing. And how he puts back into the surrounding community. And he's an actual member. And he's part of the fandom. He reads books. He might not always read the books that you read. But he reads books. He watches the movies. He's, well, he sees the news. He knows what's going on in the comic book world. And he's a part of it. That is a legitimate thing that you need. You don't want to buy cars from a dude that knows nothing about cars. You know, that's something that's very strange in salesmanship nowadays is you don't want a guy that knows absolutely nothing about a TV selling you your TV. He doesn't know anything about it. The only thing he knows is the same thing that any putz knows. This tag says 1080p, this tag says 4K, and this thing says dynamic range, and um, this is the real expensive one, that's the one you want. Why do I want that one? Because that's the expensive one, it's the best one. Why is it the best one? Because so-and-so says it's the best one. Uh, not, not even the brand, the company, Walmart or Best Buy or whoever, that's the one that is the best one, that's the one that you want. That's that's not right. I was going to drop swear, but as I said, I'm trying real hard to make this a show that everybody can actually watch now. Um, not so much that I'm censoring my show myself. Trust me, you, you listen to the podcast. That's not the case. But look, guys, it is ridiculous to me that you know nothing about what you sell. And if you are a salesman, if you are, a, if you are someone in the business of community... You need to be in the community. You need to be a part of it. You need to be something. You need to be approachable in some way. And that is exactly what Zeke is. When you walk in day one, he'll talk to you. If you don't know exactly what you want, exactly what you like, he'll talk to you. He'll try to figure it out. And he's also very real with you. He'll tell you when books are simply not good. He won't stop you from getting them. He'll be like, hey, look, that's your thing. If that's really what you want, I hope it picks up and whatnot, but so far it's not doing that good. Or he'll say, you know, this is what sells, this is what doesn't sell, this is what people are really interested in, this is that. And he might even refer you. He's actually the kind of guy that if he doesn't have it, he'll straight tell you, I would try Acme. He'll send his business there just to make sure they get what they want. Like that's, that's a very different kind of person as opposed to every single time I walk into Zeke's, every single time I walk into Zeke's, it's... Hey, what's up, man? Blah, blah, blah. This and that. Reasons and things and conversation and topics and stuff. And I walk into Acme, and quite literally every single time I walk into Acme, it's... Was that exciting? Did that excite your emotions? Do you even care to be in there? Because I'm telling you, the last time I walked in, this is exactly what this video is actually supposed to be about. I walked in and I said, I said, uh, no, I didn't say anything. Okay. First off, I went there to sell some items because I have like some stuff sitting around that I wasn't really that interested in anymore. And I was going to sell them some of the, some of the figures and whatnot because that's something they do and they do well. They got a pretty big thing there with all figures and everything. So I walk in with these things and I'm going to sell it to them. Right when I get there, there's a sign on the door that says, we're not buying anything. Now that happens from time to time. So, missed my opportunity. Took the box back, put it in the car. Go in. When I open the door, I walk in. There's some dude, some big dude, and he's watching TV. Like they always are. As I walk by... He's got another guy sitting at the counter also watching TV. 
So it's him and it's some guy who's a customer who's watching TV. And then there's like two or three guys over at the bin here. And there's a dude over here. It's like standing in the middle of the aisle kind of looking at toys and whatnot. And I walk in and I walk by that desk and I look over. And he watches TV. So I said, what's up? He looks over like he's irritated. Hey, man. Wonderful. Wonderful. I can't wait to buy crap from you. So I say, I'm just going to get what I need to get and get out of here. Walk over, grab this book off the rack, grab that book off the rack. Then I seen the True Believers books, uh, this, the Phoenix stuff that had been released. And I said, you know what? I do I do actually want that. So I said, dit, 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 dit. Now, I want you to keep this in mind as we go here. I grabbed four non-believers books. I will get the calculator out because I'm also going to tell you that they screwed me. And I'm going to prove that they screwed me. Four non-believers books at $4. There. I bought the Gambit Rogue book. That was another $4. I bought a Hal Jordan book. That was $3. Then, as I was about to leave, I said, oh, crap, those are really cool. On Keeping Up with the X-Men, I will actually show these off and talk about them, but this is what i seen. And I said, oh, I need those. Those are pretty sweet. Picked up two of them, two different ones. They're both $12 a piece. We're at $35. $35. We just did the math. Okay? We just did the math. That's all I bought. I went up to the up to the register, dropped those items off, was just looking to get out of there. That guy looks at me and he says, "You ready?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah, I am." And let's also say that just just to throw this in to show you just how crappy these people really are. I was in their store. I was over to the side. I was looking at these statue busts that were kind of cool. And I was like, these are kind of cool. And I heard them watching Indiana Jones. And there's this part where this guy's about to die. And I kind of looked over and see what they were watching. And the guy is just standing there. And the guy, the guy watching the TV says, the, the worker, the guy working, <laughs> says, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, just stand there. And then that guy dies. And he's like, he's like, Ugh, dude, this movie for as good as it is, it's so dumb. And I said, I said, Psh. I just, I just tried. I tried to test the waters. I tried to get a communication going. I said, well, I said, man, that's the best dodge in action movies is to just stand there. And this guy looked at me, and I swear to you, he was irritated that I even spoke. He was watching TV. He stopped and turned around and looked at me. And I stared at him for a second, kind of like. And he says, yeah. And he turned back around, pushed the button, ejected his DVD, Put in Planet Hulk, hit the button, said, yeah, they should have made this a live action movie. Talking to his other guy that was there again. Screw me. So I was like, wow. Okay, so I'm just, I just want to get out of here then. Took that stuff up, put it down. And he, he says to me, while he's watching TV, he looks over and he says, you ready? And I said, yeah, I'm ready to go. Says, okay, just hold on. He waits for his menus to come up. Then he pushes play, gets his movie going. Then he goes down to some piece of paper and starts writing.
46 95 that was my experience now first off fuck you I'm sorry I know that I said I'm trying to hold that back in terms of dropping actual curses and stuff but you know what we're at $35 and you can't even see that that my phone will not show up on this but anyways we're at $35. That's what I should have spent. The, and I looked at his receipt, and I cannot figure out for the life of me exactly what happened. Like, they overcharged me. They overcharged me because uh, the, the other books, the True Believer books, were rang up like regular books. And you know what? I didn't even bother to argue with him. I normally would have shot down and argued with the guy and said, no, 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 that ain't right. But you know what? Screw it. I'm done. I'm done with him. I don't... I've, I cannot believe it. I've had a good experience a couple of times that I've gone in there, and because they were the only people that were available, I stayed there for as long as I could. I was there for six years. That's a long time to me. And then Zeke's opened up, and I don't see I don't see how Acme doesn't go out of business. I don't understand it. Well. That's enough ranting for me. I'm almost at a half an hour. You could have actually watched some real show or something rather than listen excuse me, rather than listen to me rant, but I just wanted to come in and say, hey, this is what's been going on, comic books and yada yada, and tell you that Keeping Up With The X-Men is about to get a nice nice video drop and everything, but guys, I can't, I can't stand them anymore. If you are still going to Acme and you are having a good experience, well then more power to you, but I don't understand how. I don't, I don't get it. They overcharge 100%. They overcharge. This tag says $12. Even with tax at 10%, I should not have paid $46 to get out of that room. It is ridiculous that I paid that much money. They overcharged me. They had crappy customer service the guy was a prick and has always been a prick and first off you are at work maybe i'm an, maybe i'm being maybe i'm being a prick but you are at work i don't care that it's just a comic book store every time i walk in there Every single time, they are not working. They're watching TV or playing on a computer every single time. I never see them stocking the shelves or doing anything that actually proceeds to work, which means that they do such little amounts of work that it doesn't really register. If I can walk in there every single time and see them watching TV, hanging out, sitting down, being bored, eating, uh, no, that's, that's a normal thing too. I will walk in there time and time and time and time again where they're eating wings from like, from some wing place. It's all honey barbecue and everything and it's all over their hands and whatnot. I see that all the time. I see, I see food right there at the counter all the time while they're eating. Now I realize sometimes that dude's there by himself. He needs to eat, he needs to eat, you gotta do that. But there's something about the way it's handled that just seems ridiculous. It is, it is too often that I never see work happening in that building. They're always watching TV, playing on the computer, and eating something. And when I walk in, they can never be bothered to do more than, Hey. Well, you know what? Hey. Done. I have spoken. Take what you will from it.